sing, sing and make music to the Lord in your hearts. Always thanking God the Father for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear sisters, my dear brothers, friends, peace be with you. Thank you all for joining me in this Holy Eucharist of thanksgiving to God on the occasion of my 80th birthday. I pray that the blessing of the Almighty God will pour on each and every one of us here and all those men and women of goodwill who have shown such kindness to me. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this holy mystery, let us now acknowledge the fact that before God we are all sinners in need of repentance and ask God to pardon us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, the Father of every gift, we confess that all we have and have comes down from you. Teach us to recognize the effects of your boundless care and to love you with a sincere heart and with all our strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I will recount the merciful love of the Lord, the praises of the Lord, according to all that the Lord has granted us, and the great goodness to the house of Israel, which he has granted them according to his mercy, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, Surely they are my people, sons who will not deal falsely. And he became their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. The word of the Lord. response to the psalm is, I will bless your name forever, O God. I will bless your name forever. <laughs>
count the greatness and might. Every call upon that good place and sing of your job deeds be A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. He destined us in love to be his sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us. For he has made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him, according to the purpose of him, who accomplishes all things according to the counsel of his will. We who first hoped in Christ have been destined and appointed to live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, we are sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who is the guarantee for our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. I will all rise for the gospel acclamation. Oh, oh, oh. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to Jesus, glory, glory, and glory to Jesus. A priest was preaching at a birthday mass, like this one in Lagos. <laughs> he made reference to Psalm 90 which says that the sum of our years is 70 and 80 for those who are strong. He then added that 90 
is for those who are stubborn. I do not subscribe to that. I rather believe that 90 is for those who are stronger and 100 is for those who are strongest. Your Grace, Most Reverend Ignatius Kaigama, Archbishop of Abuja, your Excellencies, my Lord, spiritual and temporal, royal fathers here present, Reverend Monsignori, Reverend Fathers, major superiors and members of religious institutes here present, knights and ladies of the church, dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, Please join me to warmly congratulate our birthday celebrant, John Cardinal Oloron Femi Onayekon, as he attains the bigger age of those who are strong, 80 years. Your Eminence, congratulations. Happy birthday. <laughs> Your Eminence, a lot of things around you suggest that you are stronger. Therefore, you should make it to 90. I pray that you do so in lasting health of body, mind, and spirit in the name of Jesus. After that, may God grant you whatever whatever is best for you. Your Excellencies, dear people of God, we Catholics do not celebrate a human being with a holy mass. We celebrate only God. <laughs> God alone is the one that we celebrate at mass, any mass. That is exactly what we have gathered here to do today. Any celebration of the celebrant himself will take place outside the Mass. We want to celebrate God. Indeed, we have to celebrate God because He has been gracious Alone with me on Ayeko. God has been gracious to him. And that happens to be the meaning of his name, John. The Hebrew name Yohanan, which the English John translates, means God, that is Yahweh, the Lord, has been gracious or more literally, graced by God. Which means, God loves me. You will agree with me that God has indeed been gracious to our celebrant beyond all measure. That is why we must celebrate God today for all that he has been and done for John Cardinal Oloron Femi Onayekon. God began to be gracious to him when he was born into the devout Catholic family of Mr. Bartholomew and Mrs. Joanna Onayekon in Kaba, Hogi State on the 29th of January, 1944. His parents saw to it that he received a sound Christian and Catholic upbringing. 
God was gracious to him. When, after a stellar academic career at the Mount St. Michael Catholic Secondary School, Aliyah Day, Benway State, he had a call to priesthood in the Catholic Church. Young John had secured one of the best results in the entire West Africa at the West African School Certificate Examination WASC in 1962. As a result, the then Northern Nigerian Regional Government offered him a scholarship to study any subject of his choice in any university of his choice anywhere in the world. Incredibly, the young man turned down the Mount Warfarin offer. He had heard the call of God, like the boy Samuel, in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 10. And he chose to answer that call rather than the call of men to study some secular discipline in any university. In January 1963, John Onayeko proceeded to St. Peter and Paul Major Seminary in, at Bodija in Ibadan, Oyo State, to begin his journey to the priesthood. That was where I first met him 60 years ago in January 1964. John Onayeko was in the second year of philosophy. I was to begin the first year. <laughs> when I arrived at the seminary, John Onayeko was the star of the seminary. He was so brilliant. Everyone was in awe of him, including even some of his teachers. At every examination, he left everyone in his class trailing by a wide margin. God showed his graciousness again <coughs> when John was approaching the end of his study of philosophy in the middle of 1965. His bishop, Most Reverend Auguste Delisle, a Canadian, decided that he should go to Rome in the next academic session for the rest of his priestly formation to study theology. As God would have it, my old Archbishop in Lagos, <laughs> at that time, Most Reverend Leo Hill Taylor decided that I too, along with two other seminarians from Lagos, should go to Rome to continue our own formation at the same time. So it was that on the night of September 10, 1965, John Onayeko and I, along with my two colleagues, boarded an Alitalia flight to Rome to continue our studies for the priesthood. On arrival in Rome, all four of us were admitted to the Pontificio Collegio Urbano de Propaganda Fide. When the academic session began at the Universita Urbaniana, John Onayeko went into the first year of theology. My colleagues and I were admitted into philosophy. Even in Rome, Onayeko's brilliance shone like a thousand stars. He made us Nigerian students very proud. After four years, he completed his studies 
with a licentiate in theology and returned to Nigeria to be ordained a priest. God was gracious to him when he was ordained a priest in his native Kaba on the 3rd of August 1969 by the same Bishop August Delin. After spending only two years in Nigeria, by August 1971, Father John was on his way back to Rome for further studies in theology. He was kind enough to stop over in Lagos for my own priestly ordination on the 15th of August 1971. Father John finally returned to Nigeria with a licentiate in script, sacred scripture and a doctorate in biblical theology early in 1976. Once again, he stopped over in Lagos to visit me. After a spell, when he was rector of St. Clement's Seminary, Lokoja, he was drafted to the faculty of his alma mater, St. Peter and Paul Major Seminary, Bodija, Ibadan, in October 1977. He was appointed vice rector to the legendary father, later Monsignor Patrick Uboko of Blessed Memory. Father Uboko left the seminary in February 1978, and Onayeko became the rector. Again, as God would have it, in August 1978, I received my own marching orders to proceed to St. Peter and Paul Seminary as a member of the formation team there. I was appointed vice rector to Father John Onayeko. As rector, Father Onayeko displayed the attributes of a servant leader, exactly as Jesus instructed his disciples in Mark chapter 10, verses 42 to 45. On that occasion, our Lord gave himself as an example when he said, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. As a servant leader that he was, Father Onayeko carried us members of staff along in the running of the seminary. He had a listening ear for our suggestions and recommendations. He weighed them carefully, and if he found them useful, he imp implemented them. I'm sure my brother, who was also a member of the formation team at the time, will bear me out. Monsignor Anthony Akin Olaumi is here with us. Although still a young man in his 30s, he was like a father figure to the seminarians. He left no stone unturned in providing for the welfare of the seminarians. While not being lax on discipline, he made the students feel completely at ease, and the atmosphere in the seminary was friendly and relaxed. I'm sure, again, his past students will bear me out on that. I know that Three of them are archbishops now, two of whom are here. About a dozen others are bishops. Many more are priests. A good number of them are here 
with us at this mass. I have seen them. They have come to honor their former formator and rector. On the 15th of February, 1982, the Pope came calling at our seminary. His name was John Paul II. He was on a six-day pastoral visit to Nigeria. The purpose of his visit to Ibadan was to meet with and address the academic community of Nigeria at the University of Ibadan, as well as meet with and address the religious, male and female, of Nigeria at our seminar. After meeting with the religious in our seminary chapel, the Pope and his entourage repaired to our staff residence for lunch. His chief host in Ibadan was the then Bishop of Ibadan, Most Reverend Felix Alabajo, who is also here this morning or this afternoon. The host at the seminary was our rector, Father John Onayeko. After lunch, the Pope was to take a little rest in one of our staff suites before returning to the Apostolic Nunciature in Lagos by helicopter. As you would expect, the suite was immaculately furnished, decked out with gorgeous window blinds and bed linens. But behold, shock of all shocks, water was not running in our taps. Yes, there was no water in the taps. Our rector, Father Onayeko, was reduced to teaching the Holy Father how to use a bowl to scoop water from a bucket to wash himself after a siesta. After the Pope's departure, the next day, we discovered that the workers of the Oyo State Water Corporation, who were sent to carry out maintenance work at our seminary ahead of the Pope's visit, had turned up the mains bringing water into the seminary. After their work, either mistakenly or deliberately, they did not turn the mains back on. As a result, there was no running water in our seminary when the Pope came calling. We Nigerians have been embarrassing ourselves for a long time. The great tragedy is that we have not stopped embarrassing ourselves, even today, 42 years later. God was again gracious to Father Onayeko because the Pope must have noticed him during his visit to our seminary. He must have noticed the man who taught him how to use a bowl to scoop water from a bucket to wash himself. I say that because exactly six months later, in August 1982, news came from the Vatican of the appointment of our rector, Father John Onayeko, as the auxiliary to Most Reverend William Mahoney, SMA, Bishop of Ilori. Monsignor Onayeko's Episcopal ordination took place in St. Peter's Basilica, Vatican City, along with that of Monsignor Kevin Ajay on the 6th of January, 1983, Solemnity of the Epiphany, at the hands of none other than the Pope himself, John Paul II. Our bishop in Ibadan, 
and chairman of our seminary commission, Most Reverend Felix Alabajo, led a delegation to the ceremony. I was privileged to be on that delegation, having succeeded Bishop Onayeko as rector of St. Peter and Paul Major Seminary. The entire Onayeko family, father, mother, and siblings were also there, along with healthy contingents from Ilori, Ibadan, and Lukoja diocese. After his Episcopal ordination, God became exceedingly, embarrassingly gracious to Bishop Onayeko, so much so that his ministry just took up until it hit dizzy in heights. In rapid succession, he became the substantive bishop of Ilori, coadjutor bishop of Abuja, bishop of Abuja, archbishop of Abuja. When the news broke of his creation as a cardinal in 2012, the only surprise was that it came about a decade later than most people expected. Cardinal Onayeko has held so many important positions within and outside the church at local and universal levels that I cannot begin to name them. They are all very well documented. Suffice it to say that he has discharged every office that he has held with grace and distinction. That is the reason why no one was surprised when he was created a cardinal, a prince of the church, because it was eminently deserved. As a bishop and cardinal, our celebrant has shown himself to be a very fair-minded person, a thoroughly global personality, a man who is not given to denominational or religious bigotry. He gets along very well with everyone from all walks of life and political or ideological persuasion. What is most striking about him is that he is unbelievably humble. His exalted office and prodigious talents notwithstanding. Whenever Cardinal Onayeko comes to Lagos, he nearly always stays at my residence in St. Leo's Kali Church, Ikeja. Sometimes, when I introduce him to my parishioners as a cardinal, they think it's a joke. How can this simple and unassuming man be a cardinal? I mean, a real one, not a Nollywood cardinal. <clears throat> that is exactly how the cardinal has been since I first met him 60 years ago. Your Excellencies, dear people of God, dear friends, in light of the superabundant graciousness of God to our celebrant, there's only one thing we can do, one thing that we must do, and that is to celebrate the graciousness of God, as I said at the beginning of this homily. We celebrate God with thanksgiving. That is what this Mass is all about, as clearly shown in the three readings that we heard earlier on. Cardinal Onayekon can make the words of the prophet Isaiah in the first reading his own. With Isaiah, he can say, 
I will recount the merciful love of the Lord, the praises of the Lord, according to all that the Lord has granted me. With the Apostle Paul, in our second reading, our celebrant can bless the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ for the riches of his grace which he lavished upon him. I believe that with our blessed mother Mary, Cardinal Onayekon is right now magnifying the Lord. And we all should magnify the Lord within. For he who is mighty has done great things for him, and holy is his name. At ordination, every Catholic bishop chooses a motto. Cardinal Onayekon's episcopal motto is Fiat Voluntas Tua, Thy Will Be Done. That is exactly how he has lived all his life. That is what has defined his life from cradle until this time. That God's will may be done always and in all things. Cardinal Onayeko has allowed God's will to guide him in every place that he has been. God's will has taken him to the very pinnacle of ecclesiastical office. God's will has kept him alive and well for all of 80 years, the event that we are celebrating today. I pray that God's will continue to steer the course of the remainder of his earthly life. In concluding this homily, I would like to recommend and commend Cardinal Onayekon's motto to all of us, indeed, to all Nigerians. Because one thing that we Nigerians don't do, most of us, is God's will. We don't do God's will. I believe that is what has brought us to the abject state that we find ourselves in as a nation. Sometimes we hear some people admonish us to accept the unacceptable as the will of God. No, sir. The acceptable injustice, man's inhumanity to man is not the will of God and it can never be. Rather, it is a subversion of the will of God. Some capricious people install their own will that is patently selfish and self-serving and then turn around to demand that we accept it as the will of God. No, we cannot do that. We will never do that. We shall continue to call it by its name, a blatant subversion of God's will. I believe that the day that we Nigerians begin to let the will of God guide the affairs of our nation, that day things will begin to look up for us in this country. Security the economy, national harmony and cohesion, our international image, and more. For as long as we continue to lie to ourselves that our own warped and perverted will is the will of God, for so long shall we continue to grope in the dark. We shall make no meaningful progress at home, and we shall be unable to occupy our rightful place in the Committee of Nations. Thanks be to God 
that he has been so gracious to our celebrant, His Eminence, John Cardinal Olonu Femi Onayeko, all these years. I believe that we can continue to count on God to still be gracious to him in the years ahead. And when that day dawns, that he will go to meet his maker, I pray that God will still be there, being gracious enough to admit him into the communion and fellowship of the saints in heaven through Christ our Lord. Once again, Your Eminence, John Cardinal, along with me on Ayekon, happy birthday. Dear brothers, dear sisters, God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, has revealed himself to us as a kind and loving Father who continues to manifest his benevolence in our lives. Let us ask for the grace to always be grateful to him. Let us ask at the same time for our other needs. For the Pope, bishops, priests, and deacons, that God may continually fill them with the spiritual graces they need to be able to nourish those entrusted to their care. We pray, O oh Lord. government leaders, that they may always work for equity, unity, and cooperation among those they govern, and so promote fraternity and peace. We pray, O oh Lord. John Cardinal Onaikon, 
who celebrates his 80th birthday today, may he continue to enjoy good health of mind and body. We pray, O oh Lord. For the spirit of gratitude, that we may never forget to give thanks to God, notwithstanding the situation we find ourselves in. Let us pray to the Lord. For the dead, especially those who have supported the celebrant over the years, particularly his parents, that they may enjoy eternal rest with God. We pray, O oh Lord. We pray in silence for our own needs. Almighty God, you never fail to show us your loving kindness. Hear our prayers, we implore you, and grant that we may never take your goodness to us for granted, but be ever filled with gratitude to you, through Christ our Lord.
pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the gifts you have bestowed, O Lord, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, humbly begging that what you have conferred upon us in our unworthiness, we may give back to the glory of your name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Let us give. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for although you have no need of our praise yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift since our praises add nothing to your greatness but profit us for salvation through christ our lord and so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you and with joy we proclaim fountain of all holiness. Make holy therefore these days we pray, and turning down your spirit upon them that they do form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave it thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Supper was ended, they took the chalice. 
I want to small giving camp. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember the church. O oh Lord, spread throughout the world and bring them to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Ignatius, our brother, Bishop of the Solidarity, we, the concelebrated bishops, including Amsterdam, our leader, be mindful also of these your servants whom you have willed to provide today. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The chariots of salvation and grace, and I will call on the name of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, you have given to us a speech of food through the sacrament of your Son, which we have offered to you in thanksgiving. Grant that this testament by the gifts of courage and joy. We may send you to us in good day and be worthy of seeing further blessings through Christ our Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. The Lord is good. Their brothers and their sisters. To continue our celebration at this moment with the guidance and permission of the Archbishop of Abuja. Most Reverend Ignatius Ayel Kagama would establish this as our guide, the protocol list that holds and recognizes everyone. Your evidences, your graces, your lordship, right Reverend Monsignori, Reverend Fathers, Reverend Dickens, Major Superiors, Consecrated Men and Women, Catechists, Seminarians, Knights and their Ladies, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Representatives of government, Honorable Ministers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Representatives from the Federal Capital Territory Administration, Distinguished Senators, Members of the House of Assembly, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, The chairman of today's celebration, captains of industries, businessmen and women, traditional rulers, the presidents of the Catholic Men Organization, 
the Catholic Women Organization, the Catholic Youth Organization of Nigeria, security agents, gentlemen of the press, and the very big one that covers all of us here present under this umbrella of recognition comes each and every one of us here present. Having established this as our guide, may I first invite the representative of the Bishops' Conference to, on behalf of the Conference of Bishops of Nigeria, to make a birthday wish to His Eminence, John Cardinal Onaika. And this will be done by Most Reverend Gabriel Leke Abegori, the Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Ibadan. Family, and your friends, you need 
dear to you, I pray for you, I pray to you. Worship me God on your behalf, praise the God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, God bless you. We will now take the better wish from the Archbishop of Abuja, Most Reverend Ignatius Ayon Edana. sentiments of greetings and most sincere goodwill to you. Father Chris, don't be disturbing his eminence. <laughs> yes. So, I'm saying we are conveying our warmest sentiments of greetings and most sincere goodwill to you, your eminence, John Cardinal Onaikon, on your 88th birthday. And we call it the Oak Jubilee. The Oak Jubilee. Taking over from your venerable predecessor, the late Dominic Cardinal Kandem as the Archbishop of Abuja, God has used you in very great measures to continue together with the wonderful priests and religious and the dynamic people of God to build the Catholic Archdiocese of Abuja to the high level it has reached. I am certain that a lot of prayers, sweat, hard thinking, planning, and execution went into all you did in your Episcopal ministry here. No gold, no silver, no compensation is adequate a price for all you invested in the Archdiocese for the past almost three decades. It is not possible either to quantify in material terms your numerous achievements. Only God can adequately reward you. With this Mass, we have thanked God. And we continue to thank God for giving you to the Archdiocese of Abuja as a gift with all your tremendous talents spiritual and physical energy, academic brilliance, and pleasant personality. I wish to quote from my first speech as the Archbishop of Abuja after my installation on the 5th December 2019 in this particular ongoing cathedral building, which is one of your very important contributions to the Archdiocese of Abuja. This building was done during the time 
of His Eminence Cardinal Ekanda. Could you acknowledge that and give him a good clap? It's still ongoing. There is still work to be done, but I tell you, a lot of work has gone into this. So much work, even though there is still so much to be done. On that day of my installation, I, I quote, I said, I respectfully salute His Eminence, John Cardinal Onayakan, who has retired, but is not tired, for proficiently providing this necessary pastoral leadership to the Archdiocese for 27 years. You have gallantly fought the good fight. You have honorably finished the active Episcopal race. You have unwaveringly kept the faith intact. The crown of glory awaits you now. I wish you a serene retirement. That was my speech I gave on that day. <clears throat> I received the news of the Episcopal ordination that John Onayekon in Rome while listening to a Vatican radio when I was a parish priest in a rural place called Jangonu where the Secretary General of the Catholic Secretariat, Father Sam Jumi, comes from. I was the parish priest there. Then one morning, I was listening to the news. And in the solitude of that parish house, I tuned to the Hausa Vatican Radio. They used to broadcast Hausa on the Vatican Radio. Then I heard Bishop Kevin Ajay of Sokoto talking. Then I heard Bishop Onayekan talking because they were among those ordained by the Pope, then Pope John Paul II on the 6th of January, 1983. I did not know that years later, I would be succeeding John Cardinal Onayakan as the Archbishop of Abuja. Indeed, how the Lord's ways are God has blessed Cardinal Onaikan with unusual strength and ability to combine so many things, such as managing a big archdiocese. Sometime he was and the president of what used to be the Association of the Episcopal Conferences of West Africa, as well as the symposium. The Episcopal Conferences of Africa and all simultaneously, and he performed his duty with great admiration and excellence. His interreligious initiatives are well known today in Nigeria and beyond, and his honest desire for peaceful, harmonious coexistence and genuine interreligious dialogue has taken him to different parts of the world to present papers, give talks, seminars, and retreats. The man, Onaikan, is an intellectual colossus, a loyal son of the church, and a patriotic Nigerian. No wonder the Pope honored him by making him a cardinal. He was also bestowed a national award of commander of the Niger CON by the federal government of Nigeria. His dedication to the cause of the church is exceptional, and his love for Nigeria and Nigerians is what makes him often speak with characteristic passion and patriotism in his public statements. At a time when Many people would want to see a hostile confrontation between Muslims and Christians. He preaches ceaselessly the gospel of peaceful coexistence together with his friend and colleague, the Sultan of Sokoto, His Eminence, Al Haji Sa'ad Abu Bakr III. Cardinal Onaikan would tell all who care to listen that we are all children of God, made in his image and likeness and we share a common humanity. And so, we should not dispel energy attacking and killing one another in the name of religion. Only two days ago, he said, I quote, shouting God's name 
but killing your neighbor is not religion. In Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7, we read that Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not dimmed, nor his teeth displaced. Your eminence, may you live to the age of Moses. I wish from the bottom of my heart to thank our Abuja Ashdasesan family for making sacrifices during these hard times to contribute towards the making of this occasion. To the Ashdasesan committee for the 88th birthday of His Eminence under the dynamic and creative leadership of Father Chris Enek Benebu and the very capable hands he employed to serve in eight subcommittees, namely welfare, security, transition. All these were subcommittees which served very, very effectively. And from the bottom of my heart, I said, thank you, God bless and reward you. When uh, Monsignor Nayabu was saying um, about the Pope coming and water ran short, as he wanted to take bath, and he said, we Nigerians should stop embarrassing ourselves. I thought I should add another one to that. When the Pope visited during the time of Abacha, we were in the airport to receive him, and the military governors were all there. Abacha was there and giving a speech. In the, midst, in the middle of his speech, Nepa went off. <laughs> the Pope knew that that could happen. So he brought his prepackaged public address system. As soon as Nepa went off, somebody quickly went around and they brought out a small box, small box, and then un unveiled it. And before you knew it, it was perfectly clear. Even if you were in America, you would hear what we were saying in the airport then. I say, why can't we get it right, Nigerians? But the good thing is that this, yesterday I saw somebody he posted a video on admiring Nigerians. He said, Nigerians always succeed. And he said he must find out the secret why Nigerians will succeed. That where they go in East Africa, from Uganda, Tanzania, to look for something they won't get. But if a Nigerian goes there, he will get. So he was advising his country, men and women, to imitate Nigerians, to do whatever Nigerians are doing so that they will succeed like Nigerians. So we are not all bad altogether. There is something good in us. It's only, as Monsignor Nyabu said, the good will, the will to do what is right. Whether in leadership or as citizens, we must do what is right. Sincerely do our work and be honest with ourselves and break down the unnecessary barriers of religion, north, south, and all the ethnic differences. We must break down all these barriers. Dear beloved archbishops, bishops, monsignori, priests, religious, deacons, seminarians, novices, postulants, catechists, distinguished government officials, distinguished men and women in business and private practice, papal knights, knights and ladies, royal fathers, the biological family of the cardinal, they are all here. Dear people of God, together with our auxiliary bishop and our family of God here in the Archdiocese, I thank you for doing us the honor, the distinguished honor of coming to celebrate John Cardinal Onaikan with us. May God's face shine upon you all, and may he be gracious to you all the days of your life. Safe journey to your respective destinations. God bless you. I want to f not to forget that after this Mass, there is going to be a grand reception downstairs. Please. No, no, no. Here, actually. We are going to rearrange here. Within 15 minutes, while photographs are going on, this hall, will, this place will be rearranged and it will be our reception venue. Please, don't go away. I know the Secretary to the Government is here, eager to go back for something. Spend this time with us, Your Excellency.
and many of you from the bank, I see the MD and all of the bankers there, the money will not run away. It will still be there. When you return, the money will still be there. Just stay with us another while. And all of you, please stay back and enjoy the day with us. God bless you all. Thank you, Your Grace. We will now take just very few announcements for the diocese. From the security committee, all vehicles are to exit this premise using the side gate by the law. And this is to announce that the Good Shepherd newspaper is available for pickup in this environment by the gate side. Please, parish priests and priests in charge are to make sure that they collect their copies of the Good Shepherd magazine. Please, the inauguration of the 2024 judicial year is on Monday, the 5th of February. And with the theme, rapid increase in the nullity of marriage cases in Abuja, a thing of concern. Please note that parish priests and priests in charge are expected to stand in financial solidarity with the judicial arm of the Archdiocesan body. Please help as much as possible to bring members of your church to that event. God bless you. Just to also point out, as part of the, the protocol list, are all representatives of church and state not mentioned here. And so, all our brothers and sisters from other churches, you are equally recognized and welcome. But let it be clear too that at the second phase of this, celebration that is the grand reception that holds here this main bowl immediately after the procession or after the photographs outside uh, proper recognition will be made according to our guest list so please stay back but before then we're sure the man for whom we are gathered here has something to say before the final blessing and so, brothers and sisters, let us with clap recognize and celebrate His Eminence, John Cardinal Onaikan, Emeritus Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Abuja. to do anything that we delay the beautiful reception lunch that has been prepared. And you all deserve a good lunch after spending so long with us here. It's already 2.30. But I have to say something now. After, especially on a day like this, but I will not be long. I will be very short. This is a day of thanksgiving and supplication. And I thank very much my friend of 60 years, January 1964 to January 2024. May I, John Bull, I used to call it John Bull, Monsignor Aniagu have been together. I thank him for drawing our attention. For drawing our attention in his inimitable, clear fashion to the purpose of this gathering, namely 
to give thanks to God for his graciousness to me and I imagine to each and every one of us. I really thank God for this day of celebration, for attaining the age of 80, which is for the strong, so I am strong. And this celebration is so beautiful that I'm almost seeing it as a farewell celebration. I'm ready now for paradise. I want to thank God for blessing our plans for these celebrations. We started in Rome. I was in Rome last week by Providence. Last Sunday, I was at said Mass with a large Nigerian congregation in the parish that the Pope has assigned to me as a cardinal. That parish continues to be my card my parish in Rome with my coat of arms in front of the church until I breathe my last breath. We had a beautiful ceremony there. But more beautiful of all is Monday 29th, my very birthday, I had the great honor of having a private audience with Pope Francis. From five minutes to eight in the morning until quarter past eight, 20 minutes of papal audience talk, face-to-face -face talk to somebody whom I know very well and who knows me very well. And for me, it was a high point of my 80th birthday. I, will, I don't have much to say about our talk, our discussion, but you know, the Pope was asking, now, how, I hope, how are you coping? Now you are retired in Nigeria. I said, don't worry. I want to let you know, my Archbishop is taking good care of me. So far, I am not hungry. And he says I should greet Archbishop for me, for him. <laughs> not only the Archbishop, there are many people here who are taking good care of me. I have no fear of hunger or anything. After after my audience with the Pope, according to my plan, I had arranged it with the authorities of the Basilica to go down to the tomb of St. Peter, where I said my special mass of my birthday, along with four priests of Abuja Diocese who are there in Rome, and two reverend sisters, plus one lay lady. For me, that was the high point of the highest point of my day. 29th of January. After that, the next day, early in the morning, I jumped on the plane to return home, just in time for the event of last Thursday, 1st of February, hosted by my good friend, the High Chief Lulu Briggs, to which many of you here also were present. It was organized to wish me a happy birthday, we did a book presentation, we launched the book, and we did fundraising for my foundation to ensure its sustainability for many years to come. I thank all of you who have worked hard for my birthday. May the God bless, may God bless all of you. I thank especially the Archdiocese of Abuja, headed by my predecessor, the Archbishop. Ayao Kaigama, for all you have done. It's not easy to prepare this uncompleted cathedral for an occasion like this. I pray that the Lord God will give us the wherewithal to finish the work as quickly as possible. When I started this job, I didn't know we would reach this level by the time of my, of my retirement. My my uh, target then was if we can only complete the underground cathedral, then my successor will move with the rest. God has done it. We reached this level. There's still a lot of work oh, and plenty of money, but God says we should not worry. This is his job, and it will be done. Archbishop Kagama, 
thank you very much. May God bless you and all those who are working with you. I thank God for the past 80 years for graces received. Monsignor Aniago listed so many of them, all in the service of the Lord. And I pray to God to have mercy on me for forgiveness for my faults and feelings, for sins both of omission and commission. I am relaxed in my conscience about my feelings of the past. I take very seriously the, adv the advice of St. Paul that we should not worry too much about what has happened in the past. We should face the future and the Lord God is with us. I look forward, therefore, to the future which cannot be too long. All those who are praying for me to live for 200 years, may God forgive you because May God forgive you all because you do not know what you are saying. <laughs> My, because right now at 80, I have one primary project. My primary project is preparation for paradise. And that I do every day. All I pray for is good health of soul, mind, and body. And in that order. I'm ready to continue to serve the Lord within my capacity, physical and spiritual. But in everything, may the will of God be done. Thank you very much, my brothers and sisters. John Cardinal Onaikan, what a gift to the church you are. What a gift to humanity you are. We thank God for giving you to us. And so as we go out, please ensure you are part of this epoch-making celebration by, being, uh, by having your face shown on the photographs. So there will be photographs first with the bishops outside, and then priests, religious, our dignitaries present, our special guests, the Onaikan family, oh, a beautiful one here. All those who are above 80, all those who are 80 and above. Then Kaba community, the Catholic men organization, the Catholic women organization, the Catholic youth organization of the Archdiocese, the knights and their ladies, members of the committee, and the list still goes on and on. So please, ensure you are part of the photographs today. And as we're having our photographs outside, this place will be made ready. Trust us, blast. Shall we, ri Shall we rise for the final blessing? Well Lord be with you. Blessing. Bow well your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. Now, I give you the solemn blessing in Latin, straight from the room. Sit nomen Domini Benedictum. Ayutorium nostrum in nomine Domini. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. est.
Thank you.